introducing themselves in the next um, few minutes, a short introduction of themselves to get to know them and what they do. And after that, then we'll go straight into the fireside chat and we'll get the um, event started fully. So, um, Bronze, would you like to introduce yourself first? Hello, Bronze. Oops, forgot to unmute myself. Yeah, so I'm um, super excited to be here. Nice to meet everyone. My name is Bronze and um, I'm born and raised in Hong Kong. So for the um, last two years, been working um, mainly supporting startup events in greater China. And, uh, but it happens that last week was actually my last, last week in, in, in the company. So I'm actually going through a kind of like a career transition, transitioning to doing um, more for um, related to sales. Um, and I'm also um, starting a community that's called Daily 1% Growth, um, aiming to inspire people to just keep growing every single day to learn more about themselves, to learn more about um, everything around them. So that's a little bit about me. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Saba, would you? Yeah. Thank you, Shay. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for this wonderful event. Uh, nice to meet everybody. And uh, my name is Saba. I'm from Georgia. And uh, the last two years, that's, I live in Beijing. Uh, and uh, well, with my partners, I found a company, You Succeed. And we work on human potential development. And we have like main training program and coaching sessions. Uh, and also, I found a company in Georgia, which, uh, which is doing exactly the same thing right here um uh, yeah excited to be here and basically that's for now i think that's enough cool, i don't cool. want to thank overload you, you. yeah <laughs> <laughs> thank you all right so um we're, we're gonna be starting right now the fireside chat and if you have any questions you want to ask we're gonna have a q a session but while we're going probably you have a question in your mind you can just type it in the chat section and someone would manage that for us and we'll get back to you on that so um, right now we're gonna start. And I think um, personal branding is a pretty um, important topic, especially in this time where we have a lot of people working from home, like virtual working and everything. And even outside virtual work, you know, so it's pretty important when you wanna increase your network and like, you know, starting out your, in your career. So I don't know, um, maybe you guys can give a, a short um, brief introduction or uh, a definition of what exactly personal branding is for someone who doesn't really know what exactly it is. Who started me? Uh, okay. okay. So, um, uh, so the definition is, is the crucial part. So we need to know what is brand and what is branding and what is personal branding. Sometimes we're getting confused because uh, people like mix together like brand and branding. Some people think it's the same thing, but like brand is a product on a market which has its own values and like uh, expectations. We have some expectations from the brand and the vision and the promise. And it's also like uh, it's a made product and the branding is the process of creating the brand. So I like the uh, self branding definition. So self-branding is a process of building your message to other people, building your personality. And sometimes we think that like self-branding is uh, to buy a cool suit and to drive a cool car or to have a cool website, but that's not it. Like per a personal branding is a deep process, which means to build your personality in a way you want to see yourself and in a way you want other people to perceive you. That's the that's the, the crucial part. We should know that. And um, uh, I think um, personal branding is a conscious conscious choice. It's not for everybody, everyone. Like uh, it's not necessary. It's a conscious choice. If you want to build your own message, then you are working, uh, building this message. And the working is like uh, you are conscious about that. That's the important thing and the work is organized, like you know what you're doing, okay? So I think that's enough for the definition, if it's clear. Awesome, awesome. Bronze, do you wanna add anything to, to that? You yeah, wanna add just, anything to? Yeah, a little bit thing to add. So um, in the beginning, I thought that personal branding, it's actually about like the logo, the design, the, the banners that you have, but that is not 
uh, that is like that is part of the element, but that's not really true. So I think personal brand, having a personal brand, basically it's building the um, perception of how people perceive you. Like because we are not meeting everybody face to face, right? So right now everybody is just seeing you on the social media. So what is the perception? that when they look at your profile, when they look at what you share or your content, like what are they actually perceiving? And I think one of the, uh, one of the things that personal brand can help you with is that by having a personal brand, you actually kind of can build your trust with other people because they kind of get to understand who you are. So I think fundamentally, like building a personal brand is just basically sharing who you are more on a structured manner on a on a on a on a social media yeah awesome thank you for that definition i think it's really important also like like bro you said like it's the perception of what like the perception of pe- what people have uh of you online i think um that's a really really cool point and also i think another question like a lot of people ask is that um what what are the best Oops, we're losing you a bit. Resume out there and I've got a good resume. Jay, can you repeat the question? Yeah. We lost you. I think you're, you're so much internet. effort into personal branding. Sorry, I think your internet is shaky. So okay. we couldn't hear yes, you clearly. Hear me clearly. Um, okay, how, really. how about now? Oh. Hello, hello. Yeah. Good. Better. Okay. Okay. So I said, um, some people might be asking like, what is the importance of personal branding? Like, why should I have a personal brand? Why can't I just have like just a resume and say, Hey, this is my resume. It looks really good. I have a lot of things on it. And yeah, I think I'm qualified for the job or I'm qualified for the position. Like why, why do you need to put so much effort into personal branding? Um, Did you guys get the question? Yeah, got it. Awesome. Well, it's not about how you see yourself only, but it's just one part, but how people see you. So you got to consider that side as well. Um, yeah, um, I have a, uh, you know, like I have like personal story. Uh, I'll share it quickly. Uh, 10 years ago, I was, uh, I had a like really nice job I, I used to like. And um, it was like number one priority, like uh, career success. And also when I had free time, I was playing music with my band and I was traveling in my country in different cities and touring other countries. And uh, also on my my Facebook was like 99% uh, content was about the music and the gigs. And uh, I found another other company who was like really interested. Uh, For me, it was like interesting company. And I uh, wanted to switch the job, change the job. So I had the interview and I went there um, and it was like uh, content was good and environment was really, really good. And the pay payment was also really nice. And uh, luck was on my side because the person who wanted to interview me, I knew her from, from my gigs from the concerts, you know, and the thing happened that uh, I was like very confident and uh, I thought I had this job, you know, I had the position. So after six minutes, she like stopped me. She said, like, whoa, 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 you know, I, I'm just thinking that I can't associate you from, uh, I can't associate to this environment. Like, I know you from the music industry, you know, so I can't imagine you, I can't imagine you in this company. So I was very upset and I was, I was thinking that, like, it's not fair because I, I, I was thinking that I had, like, skills and ability and everything to handle the job. But the thing was that... Uh, she was, she knew me from like music industry. She knew my Facebook and that was my message. She looked at me and she, and she saw me, dude, this guy is a musician. So that was not my message I wanted to deliver to people. And that, then I started to think, what can I change? You know, and I hid all the photos from the, uh, my social media, which was related to music. And I started to uh, uh, build my like, well, work profile like working profile like 
getting photos, videos, like writing some articles. And then I had some clients, you know, and then I could understood that like, it's not about like how you perceive yourself only. It's how people see you and you and personal branding gives you an opportunity to build those messages. Great awesome. one. Um, I yeah. think, yeah. So for, for me, I have a, a very simple, <clears throat> I have a very simple question. Like some people think that, that like you, your question was about like having the resume, like why don't, why can't I just have resume? Right. But then, yeah. but then it's kind of like finding a job or like, look, yeah, looking for potential work that you'll be doing is kind of like finding a boyfriend or finding a girlfriend. Like, do you just, do you just talk to the person one time or do, the, do you just submit your one resume to that person and you'll get, and you'll get potentially get, um, get together with them. It's not right. It's continuous. You wanted to give as much more information about yourself. You wanted to tell them like, not just about, Oh, I study here. I, I, I study there. I live here, but maybe you also wanted to share with them. Like, what do you, what do you like to eat? What is your passion? What do you are interested in doing? So then you wanted to, and, and it's the same as if you are just sending your resume to the employer, they can just know one aspect of you and they can just only know this much of you. But, and if they Google you or if they search you online, they can't see everything else. That's the only thing that they're able to look at you. But if you have your personal brand, you have your message, you kind of um, have certain area that you, you talk about or you have knowledge in, people can understand you better on a, on a, on a wider wider range and that is that is um that is also one way as i said um the personal brand is actually you can use it to build trust with other people and when you're looking for a job if you just have resume the trust that people can understand from the resume it's very very limited versus you have a personal brand and you have things that people can check it out to understand what type of person you are so um i think that will help a lot and we also have uh, values and we, we also like it helps us to be easily distinguishable from others and also easily identifiable and also uh, people can have expectation toward us like we give them promise what they can expect from us so personal branding is like building this process like building your values and how to be easily identifiable from others uh, and sort of things think for example you are a photographer and what kind of photographer you want to be like what like wedding photographer or or like like street photographer or even in this field you can like find some differences you have you can have your own style you know so the personal branding is about finding your uniqueness awesome awesome and if you do that you are easy to find okay sorry <laughs> it's okay. I, I think that's really. Oops. Um, Shay. Oh, Shay again. It also is. I think um, around September last year, I decided I was like, okay, I want to start um, photography. But I was like, what kind of photographer am I gonna be? You know. So I think it took me over about three to four months before I could say, okay, this is the style I want to do. You know, like I want to take photos of just people and I want to have this certain style to it. So, and I really, I, I noticed that after some time, a lot of my friends were like, oh, she, you're becoming a producer. This is that. I'm like, not exactly. It's just like a little portion of my life, you know? So I, I think it's really important. I think that's a really great point there. So I think another question um, would be, okay, personal branding is important and it's, I, I have to create a good personal brand. So um, where do you start from? What, what are the building blocks of starting or building a good personal brand? How do you start that? What do you have to consider in order to do that? Well, um, I think for me, I actually only start becoming conscious yeah, so, about it. Same since... as yours, guys. Sorry, what? Same yeah, did, did you guys hear the question? Yeah, I can hear. Yeah, yeah awesome. when, did, okay, so. when did we start it, right? Yeah. Yeah, so for me, I only started to like, I mean, everybody has a brand, but it's just that we don't know, we, we, we consciously maintain it or not. But for me, like it's only until probably last year in maybe October, 
that I start aware of it, that I start to um, create content. And I think creating content is the first step for personal branding. It's not, it's not figuring out what logo you have or it's not figuring out the color, everything. I think creating content is definitely the first pillar. Just be, uh, because when you first started, you might not exactly sure what, what kind of personal brand you wanted to build. You might still figuring out your way of what do you want to get known for. So the, and by creating content, it helps you to get a better understanding of your message, of your voice. Like if, you're, if you don't have a habit of like writing, creating um, things and um, creating content would be the first thing that you do, that you start doing consistently for your creation and through your um, everyday creation, and you start understanding yourself better. You start understanding what do you actually enjoy talking about and also uh, what people respond to your message, like their reaction. Like, and you will start lo- slowly and see what is the value that you can actually bring to other people. And as well as, um, um, and as, well as you will know where or what area you could be focused on. So it's, it's, it's a process, but I think the first pillar, I would say it's the content part, um, start sharing content, whatever, like the, 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 the things that you learn in your specific area. But I think the second part is um, uh, have a story, like have, have a story of yourself. Like if I just look you up on the internet or if I just look at your LinkedIn profile, like if I look at it, do, can I, can I kind of get a sense of what kind of person you are? What do you like? Where do you come from? Like, like what is your story? So I think um, having a story or just kind of structure your story in a very precise manner so that people can take a look like a brief of you. They can kind of get a sense of, oh, is this the person that I wanted to connect with? And so I would say that um, I think these two things is, the, is, is what I started with, um, content and also finding my own story. Um, Saba, any yeah. questions from, from you? Yeah. So uh, like I have like four stages uh, for that. And uh, it is much related to what Bronza said. Um, like first thing I uh, first thing is that detect the now message. I call the now message like message we are spreading now. Like when you walk in the street and you meet like different people or like you send resume, everybody has some impression and everybody has the message. So the first thing is to know if you like or not that message you spread right now. So you got to be aware of the now message. Okay, what impression you make now on people. And also what message you are uh, delivering to yourself. Because some people think that it's only about what other people think about you. But it's also very important what you think about yourself. So that's why we start with the now message. Do you like the message you carry right now today? And what is your message? Like when people see you, when you walk in the street and when you meet people like if it's a business meeting or like you're chatting, what impression you make? like detect the now message and then think, is that what I want to know to be known for? Okay. That's, that's number one thing. And it, it must be very clear. Uh, it, it, yeah, it shouldn't be like general answer. Like when I, when we work with clients, we always uh, like press them to make a clear message, not like general, you know, they, they might say, I want to be like professional. What do you mean by that? You know? And number two thing is that, create a future message like before we before we move to the uh, step number two um, I, I want to add that if you okay with the now message it's fine because in both cases like we are in the win position if you're okay with the now message we're conscious about the now message and you can stronger your now message okay but if you're not okay with that and if you want to modify or like switch from to different message then you got to create a future message and now there's a work to do about like what message do you want to deliver tomorrow okay if you don't like the message you deliver today what message you would like to deliver tomorrow for example you say you know i make the impression of not confident person when i go out like people think i'm not confident and i i feel that from inside i don't like that okay so what kind of person you want to be like what impression the the opposite one i want to be confident person okay what do you mean by confident how like how do you behave like how do you speak 
how does your resume look you know um and we're thinking about that and the building our message um i want to add here that uh, uh I start with that, that the image is not the whole self-branding, it's a part of self-branding. The crucial part here is the mindset, okay? How, how you think about yourself. And if you have the right mindset for yourself, then comes the other things as well. Um, number three, when you create your, your uh, future message, number three is like accepting your message. You gotta accept, you, you must like your future message. Because if you don't like your future message, you might be successful, but you play other people's game. Like you, you always dance on other people's expectations. You might achieve like a lot of success, but I have lots of clients that have like a lot of stress because of that. They pretend to be different people outside, you know? So uh, when I work with clients and a company, like we try to um, work on that, like, accept that future message you should be okay with that okay and because why we need that because we we are the brand and we should leave our values in our everyday lives you know uh, there's a saying like practice what you preach yeah so if, if you have a good message you practice it in your everyday life okay mm -hmm. and number four number four when you create your message your future message and if you have this acceptance of your future message, number four is a strategy. Like, how can you deliver your message? Like, what, what should I do to deliver my message? Like, it's like an action plan, you know? And, you, uh, and this is like the whole process. And the strategy part is about the action plan. And then you like doing it and you see the results. I, th I think those are like two different po two points of view there um, coming from a mindset point of view and also coming from generating content point of view. I think it's really important. So they pretty much go hand in hand in order to, you know, give something um, strong. And, and so um, I think you guys kind of covered the how to build a little bit also. So um, I don't know, like, Sometimes some people ask, so I want to start building the personal brand. I know, okay, I have the mindset, I have everything. So um, can you guys give like a few like platforms? Like I know LinkedIn is a very important platform, especially for professional work. So like there are other people, probably designers or, you know, maybe people who make like, um, let's say homemade skincare product or, you know, different, all those stuff. And um what kind of platforms do you, uh, would you recommend for them to, you know, you know, get on to, you know, promote their personal brand? Yeah. Um, well, from my, I'm oh, sorry. You, you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, you can start. Um, I, I think it depends on, it depends on yeah. your goal. Like what is your goal? But um, I see here, maybe there's more that are students. So if you're a student, for example, and you want, you're looking to, um, expand your network, you wanted to look for um, job opportunities, I would say that LinkedIn is definitely one of the most important one, just because, I mean, if you're, if you're also in China, LinkedIn is the only one that is not blocked, right? So um, what I particularly like about LinkedIn is that um, you, you get a chance to really connect with people all around the world and also have a, that you also can see and actually look at what they do. So if you if you if you have um if you have your uh, if you have your content and everything on other channel let's say Instagram or let's say Facebook, they can't. It's not everybody on Facebook or Instagram sharing with you what they do. But on LinkedIn, you can actually see what other people is doing. So um, I think I think for um, for like if you're looking for expanding your network from that angle, expanding your network in the area that you wanted to get better at or known for, for example, you wanted to be doing uh, work that's related to marketing, you can actually just really search for like big companies, what are the people that is working in the marketing role that when you look at their stuff, you wanted to um, aspire to be like them. So you can actually start following people there or even connect with them. And, um, and if you do create content on LinkedIn and when you request to connect with other people, this actually gives a better 
perspective and a better it gives you a better chance for you to connect with them just because they kind of can see who you are like what kind of person you are from the content and everything that you write or put it out there so um from the angle of if it's more for like career growth um business opportunity network i would say that linkedin is definitely uh one of the like i would definitely suggest people or everyone to get on linkedin and also um, make use of the platform because I was able to connect with a lot of different people, either that is for personal interest or for work and also a business collaboration opportunity. There's so many, there's so many opportunity or, or, or things that could be happen on LinkedIn. But if you are like, um, I don't know if you're a designer or if you have any other area of interest, maybe Instagram or maybe, um, maybe other platform will work for you. So, um, an example for me, there was a period of time where I actually liked to do calligraphy. So I spent a few months there actually on Douyin to um, create content and I generate a good amount of followers over there. But then I realized that, okay, I don't like calligraphy to me is a hobby. It's not something that I wanted to do in the long run. So I move away from Douyin and I just focusing on um, LinkedIn and also Facebook for now and also Instagram, also WeChat. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay. How about from you, Saba? Yeah, I agree with Bronze. Um, depends. Depends. You know, like where is your market? Like, find your market. This is the question I ask myself. Where, where are, where is my like market? Where are my people? You know, I'm, I'm searching for them. For example, for me in Georgia, uh, number one, I use is like Facebook. If we, if we talk, if we are talking about social media, you know, and uh, in China, I use uh, LinkedIn and WeChat, you know, and it depends what do you do and where is your market? Okay. 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 So, okay. Just, just to add to that, I think also, uh, um, I think a few other platforms, maybe I can recommend also, um, I think especially for designers, because I'm a designer. So um, for designers, we can, um, there, there are websites like Dribble. Dribble is a really important website for designers. It's great. There are a lot of opportunities there for getting design works. And um, as Ben has, I think that's um, owned by Adobe. And that's pretty, it's pretty good also, a lot of resources. And you can reach out to a lot of people from there also. So it doesn't just have only, and I think Ben has is also for people who provide any type of digital service. Is it making PPT or even a um, copywriting, whatever you call it, like any digital content, you can pretty much post your work there or find, you can pretty much show your process of how, okay, I, I did this work for this company or I have this idea for this um, company and this is the process of my, this is my thinking process and how I came up with this design. And I think it's a good way for you to show what you're capable of doing and how you work also. And like they said, like Instagram also is really good um, if, you're, if you're into small businesses and depending on your country also, like different countries might have different applications. Like in my country, a lot of people use WhatsApp for marketing. So if your country uses WhatsApp or you have another chat also, that's really great. So just like what they said, find um, where your customers are and then you know, start building something there. I think that's the that's the important part of everything. Yeah. So um, okay. So going up to the next question. Um, going up to the next question quickly. One second. So um, another part of after like we've we've looked at um, the, the first part, which is building and everything. So and finding a platform. So um, what's your advice to people for you know creating something that's um, you know memorable and consistent? You know. I think consistency is a really important factor. And um, what are a few advices you have on how to keep that consistency in, you know, providing good value and um, building a good brand? Yeah. Um, so I think basically <laughs> consistency, basically it just means consistent action. So if you, so if you have, found out um, what do you actually wanted to talk about or what do you actually wanted to be get known for? Like, what is your personal brand? What do you stand for? After finding that, then it's consistently sharing your message. 
and by consistently sharing your message, it actually means consistent action. So like, yeah. can you get like, can you, can you get as consistent as possible? Like, I don't know, um, it could be mean creating content every day, um, either through different medium, like um, write up, like a post, um, video or, or article, different things. Or even if you're a designer or photographer, maybe it is making or shooting different videos and then so that you can have your um, consistent daily updates of your social media. Um, or, or even, oh, actually we didn't talk about YouTube. YouTube is also a very, very good platform as yes. well, especially because, um, <laughs> especially because YouTube, people can search, uh, in, uh, they, they can search for your content versus for LinkedIn, for Instagram, for everything else. After you upload, it's gone. It's gone. But it, uh, but like YouTube is something that you can regenerate and regenerate because they can, people can search. So, um, yeah. So going back after you find out, um, what do you want to share? Like, what is your message? What do you want to get known for? And then it is the consistent action of sharing your content. So it, it could mean every day or a target that you set for yourself, like maybe um, three times a week, one time a week, start somewhere. Um, and then as you, as you do more, you'll find more clarity of what you're doing. And also, um, and also the path will unfold, but you're just going to start creating because it's all about it's all about creating creating content that resonates with people that can bring value with people and that they can get to understand who you are and then you will find some uh, what are the potential opportunity that you can um, collaborate or or, or 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 join in awesome awesome uh, yeah okay so uh, uh, from my experience you got to keep your promise, like, because every brand has a promise and brands are known for that, that they, they can keep their promise. And we have our promise and our values. We should stick our values. And as we mentioned before, we got to live in everyday life with our values. Like people should see that. And people should see that our style is not changing. It doesn't matter. You make like videos, you are writing or blogging, you know, that people must see the style, your unique style. People must see you see your personality see your message and uh also the important thing is that your image must express your message your outer image that is also important there comes a time when you hop into the resourceful world of the internet in search of a new job or maybe trying to gain social influence through instagram facebook or maybe linkedin but every time you type you just get blank or you're trying to make a convincing introduction video, an appealing resume for your new job, and every time you type there are more backspaces than words per minute. Well, if you're like me, I would like to learn how to brand myself better. In the beginning, I was just yes. consistently, um, consistently share, um, sharing content and producing content content and then afterwards people actually start asking me of how do you actually start to build a personal brand but I actually wasn't aware of it and I think that people perceive me having a personal brand one of the very important um, ingredient is because there is the congruency in my message so the things that I share they are very much surrounded by one major theme and usually I share message about growth about learning about personal development so that is what I um, I'm passionate about and that is what and that, that is the area that I wanted to establishing myself in so in the beginning you might not necessarily have a to z figured out but then as you start you will start figuring out um, your path and better your message so I think um, and 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 also when you and also another way to observe or learn about personal branding is just look at the people that you like to follow like, what do they all have in common? Like, if you look at the people that you follow every day, like, what do they do? Why do you like to follow them? Why, why are they having so many um, people follow them or engage with them? Like, what is it that they do right? And try to think if you can actually model them, like not copying them, but actually model them. Like, so are they, like, what, what is something that they did right? Like, are they, sh are they sharing their own story from time to time? What is their content pattern? Um, and, and what do you remember about them? What is your perception about them? And so that as you look at different profile, 
you can actually you can actually learn just by looking at different people profile to get inspiration from so for example if you wanted to get better with your um, photography let's say so you just look at the people that you look up to in uh, in, in the photography area and maybe there are some different clues and different elements you like and then you take it you adopt it and then after you take it from different places it becomes your own um, unique flavor but um, I think modeling is one of a very good way to learn especially in the beginning because I assume people who wanted to join is like more of just starting and I just started like um, like half a year ago so that was some of the way that I used to um, learn and um, awesome. to start awesome awesome Okay, uh, so just just to add a little more to like everything you guys have said, um, I think we're, we're going to be rounding up very soon. I think our time is almost up. So um, just a little notice. So if you have any question um, you want to ask, we're going to be opening a Q&A session after this. So just um, send your questions in the chat session right down there on your screen and um, we'll be able to see your questions and we'll be able to answer them in the next 10 minutes. So. Um, Back to what I was saying. So um, adding a little bit to everything that we've, we've talked about so far, um, I think it's um, I think it's the owner of Amazon. I think she said like your personal brand is what people talk say about you when you are not in the room. Yeah, I, I think that, that's a really important yes. thing. So I think we can put that behind our minds also and saying like, hey, you know what? So if I'm not here right now, what exactly are people talking about me? Like, what are they saying about me? I think. It's a really important thing for your personal brand, like the perception. And also another thing on like defining your personal brand, which I would like to add to all they said also is like you, um, for me, I have three points there. So this one, it's called the verb, and then you have the audience and the outcome. And for this three, so you, the verb is um, what do you do, right? And then your audience is who do you do it for? And then the outcome is what do people get out of um what you do so it's um it's, for example um i am this person and i do this for this set of people let's say for students right so i create opportunities for students to find a better job for themselves and um yeah and what's the outcome students get a better job so my target is the students and the outcome is a better job and so what i do is I help them find opportunities. So like having those three points there also is really important for your personal brand. Yeah. I don't know if, if you guys want to have, have any other small conclusions before we go to Q&A. Great. Right. Yeah, I like in my personal uh, branding that uh, when, we, when we speak about this, we, we talk a lot about the messages we want to spread. It also helps you to not only to find like where are you now to detect your message now but to see the possibilities now i think that's the important because that is connected to development you 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 all you can achieve something but you can ask them questions okay i achieved that like i have my own company or department or anything else, you know but what's next you know and personal branding is always like uh in a positive way it's like pushing you to think about new possibilities, like imagine the future picture, you know? Yeah. And you have this picture and then you have a new strategy and you are moving on like a rolling stone. All right, okay. So um, I think now we're gonna go into Q and A session. So um, the stage is open to you guys, the audience. If you wanna <laughs> ask any question, you can just type it in the chat session and we will be answering your questions okay so yeah okay, so let me just turn on the screen to Q&A session so that everyone can see where we are yeah Okay, um, I think we have one question here. It says, um, how do you measure the success of a personal brand? Yeah. D did you guys get the question? Yeah, I hear the question. I think, I think um, 
I think it, the question comes back to what does success mean to you? Like, I can't okay. tell you, I can't tell what does success mean to me. Like, the success that means to me probably not, it, it probably is not the same as to you. Wait, yeah, so okay. uh, what match, uh, so for me, for right now, like, I mean, a lot of people use, um, build their, build their uh, personal brand for a different purpose. Some actually build their business around their own personal brand. And maybe that is by the amount of, or business that generated that determine the success. But for me right now, um, I don't have any business associated with my personal brand, but for, uh, for me, it's more for two things. One thing is, um, is my message being able to share or reach as many people as possible um, and also the second one is probably uh, what are the potential collaborations or opportunity that I will be able to get um, based on the personal brand that is more like business related so um, yeah that's probably the two things for me and um, okay all right okay maybe, maybe we can we can go to the next question and then right. so one is for me. Um, I when I say that calligraphy wasn't for wasn't more than a hobby for me, I refocused. Um, did you just add calligraphy? I did not add calligraphy into my so if you look at my if, if you search my LinkedIn, you will see almost I only have one post in the entire thing that actually has calligraphy on, but um there's nothing that is related to calligraphy because when you share your content or when you share who you are, um, like change another question, like how do you want, like why do you want people to reach out to you? What do you want other people reach out to you for? So because right now calligraphy is not my focus. I don't want it to have any, I don't see career. I don't see calligraphy as a long-term career that I can do. And I don't want to have any like business thing out of it. So I removed it. But with that being said, it's still an element of me. So in my future things, maybe I can still share here, here and there a little bit of I know about calligraphy and that was my hobby before and I still, it still is my hobby, but it's a very, very little part of me. So which brings to one point is that um, when you create content or when you want to share your personal brand, one, is, one of the uniqueness about yourself is that if you wanted to, let's say, known in the photography area, you don't just want to share a hundred percent of your photography work. You wanted to share about maybe seventy percent or eighty percent. That's your main domain um, work, your photography work, your your portrait, everything, and actually leave like twenty percent, twenty five percent for your personal stuff. So, like, what do you like to eat? What 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 do you read or whatever? Because it gives people a better perspective of you as a human, a more well-rounded. So, for example, in, in my case, I might use that. So, like, let's say I share 70% or 80% of content that's related to growth, to personal development, the area that I wanted to um, be known for. And then I actually have that 20%. That's for, oh, I actually do calligraphy when, I, when I'm a hobby because... I mean, just, just, just think about it. It's the same thing as if you have, if you're talking with your friend, they are sitting in front of you um, across a dinner table. What will you talk about with them? You don't just talk about hundred percent of time of your photography work, right? You actually also talk about, Oh, like last Saturday I went there and that is actually a good place to watch movie or, Oh, I went travel there. That's a good place to, uh, to travel. It, it gives people perspective of who you are. So, um, so I hope it's that about the lifestyle as well, I think, right? It's more, I, think, I think it's more about giving people a more well-rounded understanding of you, not just your work. But there's yeah, a yeah. little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. People want to know you and not only your work. People yeah. want to know you in your work. <laughs> Absolutely. Because your person, they can see your personality in, in the things you're doing. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Shay, maybe uh, hello. Maybe... Sorry. Yes. I, 
my internet blacked up for a little bit. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. okay, sorry. Okay, um, there was a question from Olivia Chu. Yeah, I, I think I, I, I kind of missed the question. I can't see the chats anymore. Yeah, but I think so what she was asking there was about um, YouTube and like, or starting up um, like a channel or something like YouTube. And she said like, maybe if you want to start like a vlog or something that, how do you find what to focus on? I think that was kind of like the question she asked there. Like, how do you find what exactly to focus on? And she mentioned something about her page being um, a little messy. Yeah, so how do you organize your content to be um, better? Yeah, I think that's the question. I think to answer that we probably need a little bit more like information from you. Like when you say like your page, like what, which page do you refer to? And also, and also, um, like what is your focus? Yeah, for example, if, if you, uh, if, if uh, Olivia has, for example, if you're doing, uh, uh, if your topic is like discovery, like to discover new things, it might be related to, to lots of topics, you know, like you can like uh, have something, have content from the club, club life and from scientist life and like uh, from like business life and you can like travel and it's like it goes in like education maybe on discovering new things uh but that is like the core content of your of your personal brand you know if you say like education you can like uh, deliver deliver this thing in, in a different ways like not only in school but in life because there are children who travel uh uh, to to reach to the school for like uh, like many kilometers they got many miles they go there many miles that is also education you know and you can uh, you can have the core message but this core message can be delivered in different ways with different topics you know if you have the education it might be classical education school education university education it might be life education because education is not connected for example it's not only classical education we're getting education all all, all the time you know uh, consciously or unconsciously so uh, it's up to you i think uh, you need to have the core message like uh, the core idea what you want to deliver and you can like do it in different and in many creative ways so you can you can do like uh, very different topics, but the content would be same. Education. Okay. okay. Can I just awesome. say say okay. I want to ask like I I noticed there uh, a lot of, or not a lot of people but some people like they have YouTube channel they have linking channel and maybe they all focus on advertisement but when they do YouTube. Uh, YouTube video, they will be more like spoken funny, uh, introduce some funny things or some interesting things, uh, but also still focus on advertisement. And when they transfer to a uh, problem, their linking channel, and they will also focus on another point, like probably also related to advertisement, but it's more like not video and some serious business article I want to know like uh, how do we decide like uh, is it decided by the by the channel we use should we uh, should we maybe change our personal brand depends on different channel or I don't know thank you so much well um, I think for your personal brand like what you stand for and what you wanted to get known is Usually it's, it's, it's one or two things. And so your message or what do you want to get known for? So let's say, um, let's say, um, let's say it's photography. Like I wanted to focus on uh, portrait photography. I might have, I might, I might still focus on talking about photography and that's what I want to build my personal brand on. But then um, the medium, how I express myself in different platform is different. So let's say I would, I would maybe show, um, show mainly photos 
on um, Instagram. But when I do YouTube, maybe I share about, oh, where, does I, where did I get inspiration for this sort of photos? What software do I use to edit my photos? Like, what are the best place to, um, what are the best place to um, go shoot? Or what are the best gear that I would suggest when you wanted to do, do portrait photography? So you are still talking about the same thing but because it is a different platform. So you use your different way or medium to express yourself. And it also comes back to another, um, another way to look at it is, which one are you more comfortable? So um, what I learned from Gary V is that he always talks about that, um, like some people are better with writing. Some people are better with writing article, writing um, a photo caption or whatever. Some people are better with audio. And some people are actually better with video. So which way or which medium is it actually better, um, more suitable for you to express yourself that you can be um, very, very good at it and then focus on that first. And then eventually you can, um, you can diversify your, your uh, platform in different places. But um, if you're good at making video, maybe, maybe you can choose YouTube. Or um, if you're good with um, graphics, or write-ups, uh, maybe Instagram and maybe LinkedIn is also the same. So, um, and also another point to understand is that, um, another point to understand is that different platform have different, you kind of, there's different kind of vibe or feeling with it. So for example, for LinkedIn, it's more for growth, for um, learning. So you want to, uh, you wanted to study more of the people that is kind of growing bigger on LinkedIn and what kind of things that they are writing to get a feeling of how you can adapt or write things that is more suitable for that platform. And um, yeah. Awesome. Okay. Oh, that was um, your question. I think that, yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Can, can maybe I... the question from Talha H. It says, um, what are some pitfalls to avoid when developing a personal brand? Hey, can we answer before that to Sahif have a question? It's like, can we say that, say the personal brand is the real reflect on act and belief? So can I uh, give okay. a real quick response? I would say that like, like uh, first part is uh, like, like believe, I would, I would do like that, you know, believe, plan and act. Like it's, it's kind of more comfortable like because like planning and managing is important part. It's, uh, I don't think like uh, believing in something and just acting it's enough because you need like the plan, the action plan, you know, you, you know, so believe is like important thing, but you also need a plan. Okay. Which is like organized and structured work. All right. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay. Great. So um, I think the next one is, um, what are the pitfalls to avoid when developing a personal brand? Mm, um, I'm not sure if that's pitfall, but um, I think for building a personal brand, you got to really be who you are. So like, don't try to make something just because you like, don't try to create a content just because you wanted to create that content and because that looks good. Like what you share, you must really, um, it, like it has to be your message and something that you believe in and something that you stand for. So I think one of the things that I would avoid is sharing something that maybe people will like, but it's not what you like or, or, or sharing something that which is not like fake messages. I think that is one of the things that would be a no-no. It's also when you have like huge gap with your values. Like I know companies, like I always ask companies, like, do you have the content? Like, what do you mean by that? I, for example, you have any values. No, we don't. Okay, that is a problem. Or some companies say, yeah, we have, I think we have some values. You can check our website. Okay, I go there and it's like, the copied content from like different websites and like some nice words, some nice sentences, you know, so they don't leave uh, by what they they preach. I think that's a huge problem. And also the problem is when you stop being aware of your personal brand values, like you lost, you're losing this awareness. So you need to ask yourself the question, am I the person I want to be? Am I delivering my message like every day? 
you got to like check yourself and you, you should have like underlying values, underlying promise, underlying expectations, what you want other people to expect from you and what you want to expect from yourself. And you got to do this checkpoint, you know, I don't mean like you stand with a paper, but you got to have that awareness. Do I leave my, do I leave my message every day? Okay. Okay. Great. Um, I think a question, a question from Assad, he says, um, what problem do you think is key issue to be considered as top priority while thinking of establishing a personal brand? So you say, I can see my peers that consider many aspects, but I really want to know from experience for of Ms. Browns that how she personally rate the priority difficulty level. Yeah, I think it's more priority. Um, so I think again, it it comes back to what is your goal? Like, what 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 are you trying to achieve? Are you trying to are you trying to get a job? Are you trying to build a business? Like, what are, what are you trying to achieve? And um, for me, and then and also um, and also, I I think I I think from two angles. One is what I wanted to achieve. And also another one is look at the social media platform right now. What are the, what are the channel that has a very good organic reach? Because when you first starting, um, yeah. Um, the, the reason for that is because when you first starting, you also like when you, when you build your personal brand, you also wanted to attract people who follow you, who, who have the same value with you to connect with you. And when I look at it right now, if, if I look at um, different, different platforms, let's say LinkedIn, um, Facebook, Instagram, and also YouTube, right now LinkedIn is very uh, relatively a lot easier to reach people. So if you, if, you, if you just make a post, there's easily a few hundred or even thousands of views that you can get um, just, just because you publish on LinkedIn. And if I, post, if I make a post on Instagram, I couldn't have that reach. So that is the reason why that is the reason why why I chose to um, I chose to focus majority of my effort or time on LinkedIn, and then um, I do also have a YouTube channel that I started a few months ago. Right now I stopped just because I feel like my focus has to be realigned, um, and I think for uh, I would also if I had to choose I would also definitely prioritize YouTube just because it is search based. And also because if the assets that you build, it's over time, people can, you can still run the videos. If that video, if some of the videos get popular, um, people can actually see it. And the message or the call to action that you put in to under the video can still, um, can still have effect. So some of the videos that I'm watching of other people right now, they recorded it a few years ago, but it's still on the internet circulating versus if I, if I just focus on, on LinkedIn or if I just focus on Instagram, one the, once the message is gone, like the day is gone, your message is kind of gone. So I think it's also a balance of, uh, the balance of what, are, what, is, what is the place where the organic reach is, uh, organic reach is good. Um, that's why I choose LinkedIn. And also from a long-term long point of view, um, YouTube, because it is an asset. It's, the video that people can rewatch and rewatch, and also um, another point of YouTube is because when you make video, video is easier to build more trust because if that person is sitting in front of you to watch your videos for another 10, 20 minutes, um, it's you you have a more time to spend with them versus they just look at your one post. So that's what I also considered. Um, but I would say that if you start with maybe just pick one or two platform and um and then go all in into that one or two platform just learn everything about how that platform works like don't just post everything but you wanted to learn about how does that platform work how do people um become successful on that platform because everybody every platform is different awesome okay um i think another question here says um what are some of the ways one can increase reach and engagement on social media platforms? Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think I would, I would re bounce this question to you. Like, what do you think? What do you think is the way? I think what you're asking is more of tactic um, versus principle. 
So when we learn things, it's very important that we learn about the principle and, and, and not just about the tactic, like because tactic will change, but principle, what it, what, how do you increase the way of increasing ritual engagement? It's action, it's consistent action of creating, um, consistent action of creating content. That's it. Because if you look at it, all the people who has gone big on social media, their action level of um, their content creation, their effort to engage with people on the platform in different um, social media groups, their effort is definitely a lot. So um, I think creation and engagement, it's two main one that you can do on a daily basis to increase that. Okay. Um, Sala, do you want to add something to that? Yeah, uh, like we should remember that, like let's learn some lessons from the brands. Like we don't buy a product, you know, if, if brands were products, we, we could call them products, but brands are, it's, it's a lifestyle. They are communicating with us. So if you put some content on your social media, you must make sure it's not just you put it there. You, you gotta communicate with people, you know? And you got to ask yourself a question, does my content uh, make people engage in this things, you know? Uh, so the communication is two-sided. We're affecting each other. Like brands and people who are brands, they are getting in communication with people. So you can, for example, uh, when you put your content in uh, social media, you can like uh, ask some questions, make some polls, you know, like ask people what they think about it. it it shouldn't be like one-sided it should like affect people it should cause some emotions some uh, uh, questions beliefs these beliefs some it must be a life process you know that's what brains are doing yeah i think i think i think i think i was about to oops yeah, I'm sure he'll be back in a second. <laughs> so, um, yes. A post that have, um, they, they have something you want to go back to later. That you're like, this is important information. I have to keep it. Or this is going to be useful for me later. And I think I should follow this guy because I think he has good content. So I think also like um, increasing your reach and engagement, you have to provide something that's valuable something that people can value. I think it's important, the value of your, um, of your engagement. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what I, brings I up. Like they have promise, they have vision and they have value and certain expectations. Yeah. Okay, I, I think we, we're gonna um, have just one more question and after that we'd we'll have a short networking session. So the last question here says, um, any tips for someone who isn't too sure of what their personal brand is? I didn't hear the question, sorry. Okay, it says any tips uh -huh, for okay. someone. Yeah. Yeah, so, I'm, 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 more of, I'm more big of a deliver, I'm more big of a believer of just start and then figure things out. Because if you wanted to figure everything out, then it's going to be another three months and you're still sitting in the same place and didn't do anything. So I think uh, pick one place or two place and just start and then figure, figure it out along the way instead of just think, think, think and doing nothing. All right. How about you, Saba? Um, something from you? Yeah, I'm, I'm for the just do it policy. You know, if you have mistakes, that is also experience, and there's a, you can like see where you want to move, you know. But if you don't do nothing, you are in the like dead zone. So acting is yeah. a good thing, you know. You should try different things because we are not born with this uh, vision of personal branding, like how we see ourselves and everything. It happens uh, with experience, you know, we're experiencing different things. Sometimes we fail, sometimes we don't, sometimes nothing special happens, sometimes special things are happening. So that, that's the whole thing is creating our experience. And from that, then, then we have some options where we want to move. 
I awesome. also wanted to add one final thought to this. Um, just personal brand in general. I think building a personal brand is super fun and it's a great skill that you're building for yourself. Because think about what is what do you use to build your personal brand? It's you create content. That's how you that's how you deliver your message. That's how you share your message. But what does it consist of? Like the content or how do you like your profile and everything? Like if you even if you build a website, like you can learn how to build a website. You can build learn learn to how to structure a website that is appealing. So these are all different skills. And if you write an article, you kind of after a time, if you feel like your article is not getting engagement, you actually wanted to get better at it. Like you, you wanted to find ways to improve. Like how can I write bad, better articles? How can I write better blog posts? How can I write a better um, headline? And um, if you are making videos, let's say, it train yourself to remember what you have to say and then say it very precisely in just one or two minutes video. So these are all different skills, like writing, making videos, talking, public speaking, um, like making a website, and also um, how to story tell, how to tell your story, how to tell um, a story within the message that you want to share. So all these things are different, different skills. So just imagine if you're working in your profession, but you also work on um, building your personal brand, like how much, how much more you can understand or how much more you can do because you also have this set of skills of the essential, like, um, I think marketing yourself is just one of the very ex essential skills right now, uh, especially yeah. we're moving to like everything internet. So it's a, it's a fun thing to start and do. And, um, yeah, that's what I wanted to add. An exciting thing is that like you can find different channels to express yourself. It might be writing, it might be like blogging, it might be uh, building something, you know, like it's like you are searching for yourself. Like there is a saying, like Oscar Wilde said, like you got to be yourself because everybody other is taken, already taken, you know. So it's about searching your uniqueness and then the unique channels or not unique channels you can express yourself in your unique ways so you got to move around okay awesome all right um i think um i think we've answered almost i think every question that was asked today so um i think we're pretty much on time and um Saif said um you can edit a bad page but you can't edit a blank page i think um that's something everyone can take home also um a really good quote from Saif there so um, right now we're going to go into networking and Tiku is going to take over. Um, but also um, one more thing, I'm going to, there's a link I just sent in the chat session and I would like to get your feedbacks from, um, we'd like to get your feedbacks after this, but I'll send the link again in the group chat. So um, Tiko, over to you. <laughs>